Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in, de in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. May God may it bless you. Thank you sir. Now, the reason I really wanted Phyllis to read that passage is because that's really what I'm going to be talking about. And this passage um, from Ephesians chapter 4, so if you want to take notes, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25, 5 to... Um, Chapter 4, 25 to chapter 5, 2 is the, the passage uh, that is going to be, it might be good if you have your Bibles, you can just turn there and check it out. Um, because this is very powerful, this passage has some life lessons, some, some implanted um, lessons in the passage for sure. Now Paul is trying to, um, to get the people to see past their own junk. Does that sound familiar? Paul is get, trying to get the people to see past their own junk, and there is evidence in this passage that this kind of stuff has been going on for a while, and he wants them to get over it. He wants them to get on with life, get on to a better way of serving Almighty God. And I, too, would encourage us to use this passage in a way that would be a road map for us to move forward to serving God. Are we there yet? <laughs> no, we're not. Now, first, Paul says to put off falsehood and speak truthfully. It, this is what I akin to speaking the truth in love. How many of you know that's harder than it says? <laughs> but Paul says, in your anger do not sin, which I find it's very interesting that direct, directly after he tells them to speak the truth in love, he talks about, in your anger don't sin. So it tells me that maybe this, there's some truth talking that really pushes our buttons. <laughs> it gets us like fired up. The truth is, the truth is, sometimes it's hard to tell the truth, or maybe it's hard to take the truth, and it's hard for us to hear it. It's hard for us to hear it. Am I right? Yeah. So, right there, there's enough to just impact our whole life. Just in those two little sentences. If we just really took that all in, and that, that would make a really, a, a, just like, wow, ba-boom, an impact. Now, it makes me wonder sometimes. And what I've come to understand is that many people inside of them have this negative talk, negative self-talk. And it comes out in ways that really isn't helpful. Um, it's out of the abundance that the heart, of the heart that the mouth speaks, Scripture tells us. And so when I hear this negative self-talk, I wonder what kind of abundance 
or lack of abundance is inside of these folks. Now, this week I had to go to the eye doctor and I got my eyes dilated and that whole thing, that whole, you know, <laughs> the, you know, it's like, oh, you're sitting there and then all of a sudden, poof, and you, think, you know it's coming but it still scares the bejeebies out of you. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, Marilyn and I recently, we have been claiming God's healing. We have been claiming God's favor and, and, and God's healing upon our lives because there's so much out there that you can buy into this sickness and all this other baloney. And anyway, so I, I get through my appointment and pick out my glasses and the doctor says, well, I have good news. Your eyes are better than they were before. Wow. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Because you know what? I'm claiming God's healing upon our lives. And you know, it's out of that abundance of my heart that my mouth is speaking. My eyes might not have been, had I said, oh, I'm, my eyes are getting worse and worse all the time. <laughs> and guess what? Your eyes are going to get worse and worse all the time. That's right. So you have to be careful with what you're speaking. So it reminds me that we have work to do on ourselves or in ourselves. And, you know, it's not a one-time thing either. When we, when we let these, the fear and the emotion and um, all of those things um, in it's, and start confessing them, we need to check ourselves. Amen? Amen? And because sometimes if those things go unchecked, if they go unchecked, then we give the devil a foothold. From our scripture today, it says that. And the scripture also says that instead of operating out of the abundance of God, we come from places that are unhelpful and unhealthy when we continue to confess those things. Now, Paul goes on to say that if you've been stealing, you must stop it. If, and you must, you know, go to work and do something useful with your life. Maybe you haven't stole a car or a candy bar lately, but you may be stealing joy, or you may be stealing hope, or you may be stealing the gifts of God that are unused because you're not willing to use them. Um, and maybe you're just playing the victim role and instead of trying to find work you're 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 being a victim paul says go to work do the things that you need to do take care of business take care of business now how many people really like work <laughs> I, I like what i do <laughs> but there's some people that really really don't like what they do so maybe go find a new job go back to school do something productive you know what I'm saying? It's, it's in your court. The ball is in your court. And you are not a victim. I want you to hear that. You are not a victim. If you believe in God, then you're not a victim. And sometimes I think we forget that. We forget that. Now, there's always needs to be fulfilled, and there's this mentality in our culture of, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> you know, it truly there there is that there is that 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 I, that that mentality. So the better question maybe for us and for you is, um, am I? And maybe this is personal for me. Asking myself, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? What am I doing? Instead of being a victim and blaming everybody else, take some responsibility for your life. Amen? Are you stealing joy? Are you stealing hope or money or stealing from yourself even and the, the work that God's called you to do? Are we there yet? <laughs> It, if, it, if this isn't enough, the message continues. And, and the message says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. 
but only what is helpful to build others up. Now, this can apply to everybody. Because, man, sometimes we need to check our mouse at the door. <laughs> it starts inside of us, you know. We know that you can't give something that you don't have, and this is true with our talk as well. Some people are not full enough of God and God's Word, so they talk more about other things, about sickness than healing. More about the problem than the solution. Amen? Amen. I often wonder why churches, why people spend so much energy and time in judgment. Judgment of others. Judgment on issues of the day. And they fail to address the changes of personally being true to God. This is a personal thing. We got a really nice... <laughs> kidding. <laughs> letter on on the web this week and Kelly forwarded it to me and it's like Lord have mercy thank you Jesus we are doing something right yeah. but this is a personal thing are we being true to God if we can just check ourselves then we'll be able to see that maybe it is us maybe we're out of touch really with God and maybe we can begin to then speak these truths into our own life so that we can take some positive steps in keeping God in the center of our lives. Instead of blaming everybody and everything else. Personally, I think many times we grieve the Holy Spirit in how we talk. We grieve the Holy Spirit in how we talk. If we're talking about this pill and that pill and what this, come on. We have got the almighty power of God in us. And we forget that doctors don't know everything. They're just practicing anyway. <laughs> My God knows everything. My God can heal me. My God can cure what ails me. Do you think I have pain every day? Yeah, but you know what? I get up, just like you do, every day, giving God the glory and the praise for another day. Because any day above ground is a good day. <laughs> so we, we have to watch it and not grieve the Holy Spirit. We get so focused on our pain. We get so focused on our hurts. We get... Well, we're not getting our needs met, and we, we get focused on how we've been treated. Oh, my goodness gracious, that so-and-so treated me so bad. It's difficult to see anything besides that. Then Paul writes a plan. Woohoo! Yay, a plan! He writes a plan. He says the plan is get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of rage. Get rid of anger and brawling and slander and malice. These are the diseases really that, that hurt our body. These are the diseases that hold us captive. This rage, this malice. This slander, talking about sister so-and-so and brother by and by. You know, those are the things that are the diseases of our lives. And it covers a lot of life, amen? amen. Those things cover a lot of things in life. So Paul says, get rid of these things. Get rid of these things. And so maybe we need to ask how to do that. We do it by actually living it out. Living in this fullness of God. Being tapped into God instead of into our own selfish needs. Are we there yet? We're on our way. We can take the steps toward this wholeness. Chinese philosopher, I really don't know how to pronounce his name, it's L-A-O-T-A-Z, 
Huh? Yeah. Well, anyways, he says, that guy, he says, if you know this, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. A journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Steps of forgiveness. Just as Christ forgave you. Steps of compassion for one another. Steps of getting rid of the negative things in your life that hold you captive, like anger, like resentment, like rage. Get rid of them. And it means that we are willing to take some responsibility for your part. Uh-oh. <laughs> you are... To get rid of them, you must take responsibility for your part. You get your house in order. You tell your truth in love. You stay on your side of the street. You become responsible for your life spiritually. You stay connected to the vine uh, by connecting with God. You take responsibility for your stuff. And you take the necessary steps toward God and follow God's example of love. Because following this sets you free. It sets you free. It sets you free into something more, something great. So we are invited to consider what it means not to just be some name on the rolls of a congregation, but to be a person of faith that is living and breathing whole and holy. Whole and holy. A follower of God, a follower of Christ. We are invited to become willing to take the next step and the next step and the next step and the next. We are told to serve with our hearts and our minds and really with all of our lives. Where have you served lately? What have you done lately to help someone? It is in these steps that we are truly transformed and sealed in eternity. In this letter to the Ephesians, Paul clearly talking to the church and to us of what it means to remember who we are and whose we are. Who we are and whose we are. If we claim our identity in Christ, we know ourselves as a member of the body of Christ. How then, if we claim that, how then can we have all of these other things, these, this anger and rage? How can we be at odds with somebody else outwardly or underneath the surface and behind one another's back? We cannot. We cannot. If we are truly in tune with God, we will not be at odds with others. We will work it out. We will work it out. Are we there yet? No. But I tell you, saints, we must make every effort to get there. It is crucial. We've got to get there. I pray that we will make some steps today to heal, to respect one another, to act with compassion, with civility to one another, even in our differences, so that God can get the glory. Amen? Amen. I pray that as we step forward for communion today, that you will be willing to take the steps that will drive you into a more perfect relationship with God. Are we there yet? No, but we're on our way. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God.